Okay, so playing with Haskell types. Let me use one more example. And this example I'm going to take from the book uh, Learn Your Haskell. So this specific example I'm just going to take right from the book Learn You uh, Haskell. Okay. And um, the example over here in this book is um, I'm creating a new type here. I'm creating a new type which is um, data vary and um, let's have uh, t k p as my type variables equal to equal to my value constructor vary followed by two fields the first field is yaba y a b b a and um, my second field my second field is data d a b b a and this has my type variables t and k associated with it okay so the question here is what's the kind can i figure out the kind for t can i figure out the kind for k and can i figure out the kind for p okay what is it that i can i can at least infer from this uh, from this uh, type uh, uh, that I've just that from this new type that I've just created here. So this barrier over here, this barrier over here is acting as my value constructor. This is acting as my value constructor. Okay, and this barrier over here is acting as my type constructor. This is acting as my type constructor. All right, so far so good. And um, what I'm going to do now is. I'm just going to just take the obvious that is that is apparent from this from this definition, but I'm just going to write, but I'm just going to revisit my type signatures. I'm just going to rewrite some of my type signatures that can be that can be easily deduced from these from these definition. So for example, if I look at Yaba here, if I look at the first field Yaba, Y A B B A, it has a type signature, it has a type signature. But it takes in some value, it takes in some value of type Barry T K P and it gives you back an output, some value of type P. If I look at the second field Daba, I know now that this has a type signature, it has a type signature that it takes in some value of type Barry T K P and it gives you back some value of type tk some value of type tk okay the other thing that's what that's kind of obvious from here is that the kind because this is my type signature here this is my type signature here these are my type signatures what's apparent and what's known that the kind that are associated with these with these type variables or with these entities here must be a concrete type. This must be a concrete type. Okay, so in this case, P is a concrete type. TK, the TK together is a concrete type. And likewise, vary TKP and vary TKP over here are concrete, are concrete types as well. Okay, so if P has a concrete type, I, also, I already know this, that this has a concrete type star, okay? And um, I know that TK, TK must be a concrete type because TK must be a concrete type. I can assume or I can straight, I mean, easily know that, that, that K in this case, K in this case must be a concrete type, okay? Now, because K is a concrete type, T, T has a kind, T has a kind or T is acting as a type constructor that takes in a star which is this k here and it produces it produces a concrete type i know that this entire type of tk must be a concrete type because it's represented by the star here and the type signature i shouldn't be using the word type signature is the, the correct word here is the kind signature the kind signature for this case uh, for this t which is acting as a type constructor is that it takes in a star and gives you back a star here so for t here is takes in a star and gives you back a star and for k for k is something that just takes in a star okay now what's the entire kind signature for barry so if i look at the kind signature 
or vary is basically it takes in it takes in the first the first parameter in this case is my star to a star and then the second parameter is just a star and the third parameter p is also a star and if you if you give these three parameters to my type constructor vary what i get back in return what i get back in return is a concrete is a concrete type let's just try this out in on the shell okay so on my shell here on my shell here let's just clear this up a little bit on my shell here what i'm going to do now is uh, i'm just going to define i'm just going to define in this case uh let me just make sure i have enough space here so let's just uh Let's do this. Let me just make this a little bit smaller. A little bit smaller, yeah. So let's get this. There we go. And uh, let's just make sure this is actually visible. All right. A little bit better. So let's just create our Barry TKP equals to the type, the value constructor Barry which has the first field yaba and uh, the second field the second field is daba which uh, with t and k and um, first thing I want, to let, I want to get is a type signature for barry let's just confirm what i had earlier so the type signature for barrier is um, is here that uh, this barry is acting as a value constructor and the two parameters that it needs is this p followed by followed by tk giving you back some value of type barry tkp likewise if i want to know the type signature for yaba again okay, this is what i had earlier when i was doodling that for yaba the type signature is it takes in some value of type barry tkp and it gives it back some value of type p and likewise the type signature for uh, for um, I believe my second field was DABA, yeah. It takes in some value of type Barry TKP as the first argument and gives it back some value of type TK. And likewise, if I do a kind on Barry, if I do a kind on Barry, what I get back over here is that the kind for T, the kind for T, this T, the first the first type variable T, is T in this case is acting as a type constructor which takes in a concrete type and gives it back another concrete uh, it gives it back as an output a concrete type k k in this case is acting just as some concrete type star p is acting as a concrete type star and when you feed in these three parameters to my type constructor barry i get back another concrete type and um, in the next video, we're just going to use this idea of a Barry to create an instance of the type class functor.